Hi, my name is Oli and today we will check this, uh, not the box, but this, the Razer Viper V2 Pro. I will do an unboxing, then take a look on the specs. Setting this mouse, get started in some games and finally give my pros and cons of it. So let's get started with the unboxing. The mouse is nicely placed in the box, I ordered the mouse in white but it's also available in black. The mouse comes with a flexible USB-A to USB-C cable, a dongle and an adapter is also in the box. You also have a notice where it explains how to set up this mouse. It has a little particularity which we will check later. A little welcome letter. Nice stickers from Razer like usual and some nice side and button grips if you need it. So now let's take a look on the specs. The mouse is more in the mid-size range. It has exactly the same size as the Viper Ultimate. Compared to the G Pro Super Lite, it's a little bit longer but more flat. The biggest change compared to the Viper Ultimate is of course the weight. With 59 grams, this mouse is now 15 grams lighter than the Viper Ultimate. The weight of the version in black is 58 grams. The white version is only 1 grams heavier due to the extra coating you need to protect your mouse for turning yellow after some times. To reduce these 15 grams of weight, Razer cut out a lot of features from the Viper Ultimate. Side buttons only on one side, the left side, no RGB, no integrated side grips texture, no dock station adapter, only one button for power on, off and DPA settings, and lighter key cover. As upgrade, the Viper V2 Pro has now Type-C USB connection, on-mouse DPA controls, max DPI is 30,000 instead of 20,000, battery life is increased to 80 hours compared to 70 hours, the switch life cycles also increased from now 90 million clicks compared to 70 million for its predecessor. The PTFE feeds, geometry and placement are also improved. So now let's get started. To connect the V2 Pro, of course you should connect the dongle that come with but then you need to press 3 seconds the power DPI buttons to turn the mouse on and then the mouse is ready to use. To turn the mouse off you should also press the same button 3 seconds. For me this is annoying. I prefer a switch button. To customize the DPA button you must use the Razer Synapse programs. So now let's take a look on gaming performance. When it comes to ambidextrous mouse I prefer a flat mouse and here is where this mouse got big points. I really like the eye of the mouse, it's just a little bit longer for my small hands and my hybrid grip. If you have big hands, it can be interesting for every type of grip. For small hands, palm and hybrid grip can feel uncomfortable. Maybe Razer will bring a mini version of it. This could be very interesting. The mouse grip white is great, it's thinner in the middle for good grip and thumb support. So this mouse just take the great shape from his predecessor and make it lighter, improve the PTFE and make more durable. Better battery life, switch life, better technology, that's the big pros of this mouse. But let's talk about the cons and unfortunately there are in my opinion too much cons. First the texture I don't get use of it and I think that is the reason why you get in the box some grips to put on it. The whole mouse has a grainy texture which I don't like. Some people will like it, but I prefer a smooth surface. The other issue for me is the switch. For me, it's felt too hard and too loud, but this is a preference choice. You need to press a little harder on it compared to the G Pro Super Lite. The Pulsar X Lite V2 is between both of mouse. Another small remark is the accessibility to put your USB-C cable into the mouse for charging. I don't succeed at the first time. Need some training. And finally, the scroll wheel fell awkward. Maybe it's only in the mouse I get. Leave a comment below if you have this issue too. So now we come to the end. To sum up, the Razer Viper V2 Pro comes with $150 or euros, which can be for some people too expensive. But in my opinion, it's not the price, the big problems. This mouse just come way too late on the market. One year and six months earlier the G Pro Super Lite come with the same strategy on the market for the same price. But at this time the G Pro has not too much competition. Now Razer is confronted with a bunch of mouse with the same specs. The Razer react this time too late. 
for a brand that used to be always innovative. It's a bit disappointed. This mouse brings nothing new. I just hope they will be more reactive next time and bring very soon a mini version of it and maybe an Ergo mouse lightweight, for example a Basilisk V2 Pro. And Razer should keep the price around $100-$120 or Euros. Then we can talk about a new king in the gaming mouse space. And what do you think of this mouse? It's the new king or not? Please leave a comment below. I hope you enjoyed this review and don't forget to subscribe in order to not miss the next one. Bye bye!